Balotelli. Aguero! I have lovely memories from that year, from that season. I would say right from the beginning. If I go back in time, that summer, summer of 2011, <laughs> we had just won the FA Cup. There was a lot of positivity. There was a lot of momentum. I think momentum was the word. Expectations were high, but you can tell there was something special building up. Sergio, you talk about an introduction and an immediate impact. He has announced himself in some style. A special moment of what was to come. I think you saw that at uh, that moment. So that was the start of it. And I remember we started on a very, very strong way. We were winning game, game by game, important wins. And then you had that match at Old Trafford. Couldn't be six, could it? It could, you know. That was incredible. A seismic day in English football. There was hunger. I think the FA Cup really opened that confidence and that, uh, you know, uh, we can do this. I think this is kind of the theme. We can do this, we will do this. Mancini's men, top of the Barclays Premier League. And you can see throughout that season, there were so many of these moments, which when you, when you think back, it was almost fate. You knew that season was going to end with us as, as champions. Little did we know it was going to end the way it ended. Aguero, back to Balotelli, it runs for Aguero! Manchester United have extended their lead at the top of the Barclays Premier League table to eight points with victory over Queen's Park Rangers in a game that was played earlier today. Manchester City must now respond in kind. We're in the middle of a very inconsistent run. The results have been up and down for the last five or six. You know, we knew any more points dropped was probably going to throw the league title away, so it was a, it was a huge game for everyone. I remember it was tense, very tense, and you know there was a lot of pressure. It was really building up. We didn't have the experience uh, as a group, as a club, to deal with that with that pressure. Roberto Mancini persists with Balotelli, even though he said during the week very publicly that he doesn't really trust it. I don't really remember a lot before match. I remember, unfortunately, the match. Benayoun. And then Song fouls Toure. Every time I was willing to compete or play in the Premier League, people were trying to stop me. I, I, I need cost, you know. Certainly a worrying moment for Man City. We were full of young players, but very emotional as well. We care about each other and this team. We were like a family, you know. And I understand the reaction of Mario, of course, because he knew Alex and that did that on purpose just to stop me. Balotelli. Oh, now, Balotelli. Song has gone down as if Balotelli left his foot in. The tackle on Song was very bad for me. I'm not used to do tackle like that. And Song is also a player that I know, he's a friend, so, but you cannot touch my brother, yeah, yeah, so. Aguero. Sanya down in a heap again. And this time the referee does go to his pocket and it's yellow for Balotelli. You can't trust him. The words of his manager. That was always the problem with Mario. Somebody that uh, we all knew he was a different player. He was, for me, one of the greatest players I ever played with. But, uh, you know, Crazy, crazy guy. I think you have to separate three personalities with Mario. You have one which is uh, the footballer with all his gifts and his ability, and, and that side of it is an incredible talent. Then you have 
Mario, the guy, again, as well as a professional and probably as well in private life, who uh, will create a moment of attention and is unpredictable. There's the, the real person, Mario, which is the third personality, who is just very, very kind and always willing to give and help. And it's just the guy in the middle that makes it sometimes <laughs> more difficult to, to work with him. Uh, I was unpredictable. A lot of unpredictable in the pitch. That was also my quality. We knew what we were getting with Mario. And I think that it's also important to say that, you know, there was many, many good things about Mario. Unfortunately, um, you know, there's always this kind of thing that follows him that, um, you know, that, that there are always issues. Always love him like a brother, you know. For me and him, the connection was so strong. Sometimes I get angry with him. I want to fight with him. Doesn't listen. When you want to do stuff, you have to do it. Oh, are you kidding? Serious? Mario Balotelli. I like Mario. I love Mario because I think that uh, he's a good guy. And uh, also, uh, as a player, uh, for me, in my opinion, he uh, was a fantastic player. His uh, quality was really top. Roberto could have uh, took Mario off. But Mario was a player that could, again, you know, uh, out of nowhere, uh, do something for the team. The manager knew the players we had out there and what, what, what was the best to do. And it just didn't happen for us that night. We didn't create too many chances and we, we certainly didn't deserve to win the game. Here's Barry. Pizarro loses out. Arteta! That could be the end of Manchester City. Uh, that goal really deflated uh, the team. That's seven points out of the, you know, the last nine points that we've dropped. And the, you can see the momentum shifting uh, and feel it. It was shifting. It shifted to, uh, to Manchester United. And to add insult to injury, Arsenal's fans are performing the Manchester City celebration. When we were leaving the stadium, heard like the ironic cheers, knew it wasn't a goal or anything. And before we even checking, it was, we knew Balotelli would have been sent off at that point. Oh, Balotelli late. He's on a yellow already. And Balotelli may well see his season end here. I can read myself saying so stupid. It was a, it just seemed like that's the kind of mode we were in. It wasn't particularly at Mario. It was more, it was at myself. It was at all of us. It was at us as a group. We were messing it up. We were messing something up that we might not get again. Well, Mancini put his faith in Balotelli. And that is how the Mad Cat Maverick has repaid him. As he came off the pitch, I think he was urged to do so a little bit quicker by Roberto Mancini. So as he jogged off the pitch, went up the tunnel, I give it a few seconds and then I, I followed him up the tunnel. And I've noticed that the plasma television in the Arsenal dressing room was in bits and one of Mario's boots was laying below it. He's, he was obviously very disappointed with the... Uh, with what had happened. Mancini said, after the game, he said, uh, on the bus, he told me that I never play again. <laughs> but because he was angry, obviously. You know, we really didn't perform on, on the day, I don't think. I don't think there's anything to do, to do with Balotelli, but they lost the game. It was just a really sour ending. Red and white. It's a colour that Manchester City have grown not to like over the years. But they are the colours that are most likely now to adorn the Premier League trophy come the end of the season. As chairman, you have to choose your moments over the years. There are moments that, you know, you just need to do something. He came in the dressing room and he said to me, don't worry, Roberto, we will win all the game from now to the end and we will win the championship. One game at a time. I just kept looking at Roberto and time. one game at a time. Don't worry about United, don't worry about it, just worry about us. And I told Roberto, we're going to do this. I say, I hope, Caldun, I hope that we will be like this. Uh, but uh, I think that uh, he said a, a good words because it was a very difficult moment uh, and uh, we needed the, this uh, words uh, from Caldun. Roberto, it's not mathematically, of course, but is that the title or something, do you think? No, it's not. I remember clearly when Roberto told us that from now on uh, we will act as if we've lost the title and he would, he would go to the press saying that, you know, it's over. Uh, but in the end, you know, he told us within uh, the dressing room, guys, I'm going to be talking like that. But obviously we're not giving up and we want to go for it. 
Manchester City trail Manchester United by eight points with only six games to play. Clearly that result at Arsenal was a, was a difficult one. But I think one of the things that you know, I was conscious of and others in the club were conscious of was to maintain a togetherness. In moments like that, you either come together or you break. What happened here is there was a coming togetherness. Everybody played their part there. The, the messaging, uh, the calm side of it, trying to keep the pressure out uh, and just focusing on the togetherness. You know, we weren't going to fragment, we weren't going to look to fall away and, and, and I think those characteristics came shining through and uh, more so than the, uh, the last game of the season. And so this is it. The Barclays Premier League discovers its champions today, the final day. How are you feeling? Nervous. Very nervous. It seems like a big ass, they don't do things easy. When we get to the day of the games, we will start to feel the pressure now. Yeah, that build-up was um, certainly nerve-wracking. We knew the, the end prize was going to be huge. Probably we were also a little bit nervous because uh, QPR played for relegation. And we knew this, that uh, that game was a tough game. We were playing a team that could get relegated. It was managed by Mark Hughes, former manager. It had a number of ex-City players in there. Before I came back on that day, I'd never actually been in this dressing room. For all the years, I'd been coming to the stadium and so on, and you end up walking around, going to boxes, seeing people, all that type of stuff. I'd never stepped foot in here. I'd never come down the stairs and turned right to go to the away dressing room. I'd always turn left to go to the home one. And as I entered the away dressing room for the very first time, I'm like, okay, well, this is it. The moment's here. And now I'm going to have to do everything I can to stop the team, which I've followed and loved for the majority of my life. But this is the nature of football. You just got to try and get on with it. So here we are in the tunnel. And to live, we can bring you the all-important Manchester City side and the QPR team for this final game of the Barclays Premier League season here at the Etihad Stadium. Alex. Thank you very much, Hugh. So here we have the team sheets for the final game, starting with Manchester City. In goal, number 25, Joe Hart. I was confident because I believed in what we were doing. I believed in our team. I believed that us having home advantage against the team who, you know, who, who had struggled all season, I felt like we were in a good place. We were mentally in a good place to go out and handle the situation. I was confident, but at the same time I was nervous as well. Uh, even the night before, uh, it was hard to get proper sleep. Te diría que si no estábamos nerviosos te mentiría. Nervioso estaba porque creo que habían pasado 50 años que el City no no salía campeón y encima peleábamos el campeonato con con el clásico de la ciudad. I remember one day before to to the game always uh, we play poker with my teammates and that night we were uh, three players because the other player uh, was nervous <laughs> we know they have to to win the title on no? that, that day so yeah was nervous <laughs> i've got a clear memory of getting to the ground and there was there was almost a party atmosphere before it kicked off And I thought, no, it's not, it's not finished. Yeah, I can imagine them being very optimistic and they're allowed to be. That's what makes the game the game. Like fans are allowed to do that. And if they didn't do that and were subdued and before and pessimistic about it, then it just wouldn't have the same feel. It wouldn't be the game we love to play. All we had to do was beat QPR at home, which seemed like a reasonable thing to do, but 
um, again, you know, football throws things up, doesn't it? Dressing room was the norm. Don't remember feeling any different, doing anything different. Number 18, Gareth Barry. I had to walk behind Gareth Barry every game. So that was my superstition. I had to walk behind him every, even when he weren't playing. And I never told him, but he knew. So even when he wasn't involved, he used to come down and walk out in front of me without us saying anything. It doesn't get bigger than this. Manchester City are 90 minutes away from winning the Premier League for the first time. They have to keep believing, certainly the players do, Davy. They have to keep believing that something will go their way. Well, what, what they can afford to happen, Gary, is for Manchester United to open the door and City not to be in a position to walk through it. They've got to hang in there, but for the first time this season, it's out of their control, and that is not a good situation to be in. We knew we had to win every game to uh, have any chance of, of winning the league. Carlos would come back. That, that lifted everyone. We, we knew that we'd missed him all season. The quality he's got is, is fantastic to play with. So to the teams then, the Knights that Carlos Tevez is fully welcomed back into the fold. He makes his first start since September after his very public fallout with the club. He said he would never play for them again. Extraordinary scenes down here on the bench and it's still going on. Roberto Mancini exchange of words with Evan Dzeko and then Carlos Tevez. Whether or not Carlos Tevez has refused to warm up, I don't know, but he's become embroiled in the round now, which continues to carry on. I see that change. I saw that it was hot to enter into the game. I get angry and I'm going to sit at the bench of the suplent. When he says that he's still hot, I say that no, that he wanted to put me up, but that he wasn't going to keep hot, because it was hot and it was hot. Había pasado como 30, 35 minutos calentando. The manager is asking him to do one thing. Carlos is saying he's ready to do the other thing. And that was where the manager took it as he didn't want to play. And that was never the case. Y bueno, después eh, él salió a decir de que yo no quería jugar para el City. If we want to improve like a team, like club, like a squad, Carlos can play with, with us. With me, no. He finished. Roberto was very passionate about maintaining the unity of the group, but also showing everybody that you know what happened was not acceptable. I remember when you know Carlos left, went back to South America. That made it even more difficult. The day after Munich, I called Carlo and I saw him in my home, and uh, I said, Carlo say sorry to the team and for me it's finished. Uh, we finish now and for me no problem. And Carlos said no, no, I don't want to play more uh, for City. Pues, bueno, se hizo una bola muy grande que después aparecieron los egos. When he eventually came back and it was hard, we had to kind of broker those conversations between uh, Roberto and Carlos because it was a bit of an uneasy truce. But I remember sitting with Carlos in my office and, and I genuinely saw somebody that would, I think felt he'd made a huge mistake. We just dealt with it really. We didn't, we didn't talk about it too much. We just went out there and tried to win football matches as we went along. But when Carlos came back, I think we knew, we knew we needed him at that point. They are in need of a footballing miracle. Eight points of difference between United and City at the start of play tonight. Having him back, these last games was a big boost for us. He was second to none, you know, that pairing with him and Sergio was, uh, was probably one of the best I played with. Now Aguero, Manchester City looking like they mean business here. Mike Bunty to Sergio Aguero, he did do, and how? It is a stunning strike from Sergio Aguero. And if City are after the title race, then they're not going quietly. There's Carlos Tevez. Nasri. Samir Nasri, it's Aguero! Never in doubt. There's Carlos Tevez. Carlos Tevez being hunted down by Yusuf Malumbu. Nasri, 
It's Aguero, it's pullback, it's Carlos Tevez! Welcome back to Manchester! His first step on the road to redemption! Carlos Tevez coming back was a major, major boost. For me, one of the greatest players ever to play for Manchester City. Obviously, Carlos was, was a special player, you know. Whenever he was with us, the team was just better. And a player like him, he was one of the best players in the world at the time. What Carlos was able to do is, is he came in as if he never left, really. Sloppy from Olsen. Aguero's on his way. Silva to his left. Trouble again for West Bromwich Albion. David Silva. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Manchester City are not letting go just yet. They're not prepared to walk away from the title, despite the chase appearing, appearing to be in vain. Is it too little, too late? I think we, we played a frustrated performance, whereas all season we probably had an eye on what people around us were doing. I think at this point we were just really, really annoyed with, with the previous game. And then obviously the, you know, the bonus result of, of Wigan beating Manchester United. Full time from the DW Stadium. Wigan Athletic 1, Manchester United 0. What a moment. It just felt like we're back in this. It's going to happen and it's going to be one hell of a ride. Well, Roberto, you, you said on Sunday, never say never. What, what do you say tonight? It's finished. It's finished. It's still finished. It's finished because the. United is a fantastic team, is, they have a fantastic spirit. I think that five points are too much. So much misery, so much upset, so much nearly but not quite over four decades and more. And finally this is it. They shake hands before one of the games of their lives. All that is logical says that City cannot blow it from here. But of course, on a day like this, logic counts for little. The mood was just really chipper. I don't remember sensing anything, any nerves about, about how this game was going to go. Because the evidence of the season was that City win in these, on these occasions. They'd, not, they'd dropped two points at home all season. They'd not lost at home all season. QPR had a dreadful away record and were, were fighting for their lives. There's just no other way it can go, is there? And we're just hearing that Manchester United have taken the lead at Sunderland. So as things stand, it's Manchester United who are winning the title. Yeah, we, we knew that they were winning 1-0 uh, against Sunderland away. But we, have, we had everything in our hands, so that doesn't, wasn't important. We knew they were winning and we knew that uh, we just had to win to, to become the champions, nothing else. So Manchester United lead pressure on Manchester City. Uh, only against Queen's Park Rangers at home, but it's goalless at the moment. As it stands, just as it stands, Manchester United top of the table and champions, 89 points. Manchester City second on 87 points. I was a lot more confident that game was going to be easier than Man United and, and Newcastle. And it, and it should have been on paper, it should have been that easy. And the first half was that easy. The forgotten goal. Um, we knew that we needed to score the first goal, and to be honest, I would say that was not the most pretty goal. It was just. Um, a good pass from Yaya, typical of a uh, full bag, you know, when you get inside of the box that you close your eyes, just smash it and great moment, you know, uh, to score my only goal that season in a special game, it was uh, pretty nice. Of all the players on the court to get the goal, it's Pablo Zabaleta. It was unbelievable. 
you know, didn't score a lot of game uh, goals, but I was really pleased with that because uh, he's a top man and scoring that goal was very important for the confidence of the team. Once that goal went in, the first one, we felt that the job was pretty much done. The noise when that went in the back of the net was huge and the celebrations were wild. Yeah, it was amazing when that went in. I actually felt then that we'd done it, if I'm being honest. And it, it was like, it felt a celebration like that, which is probably the wrong thing, really, looking back, but that's how it felt. Big problem was to score, and probably we thought that, OK, now the game is finished, we can control this game. Instead, uh, I think that we had uh, we had a big problem uh, and uh, probably big pressure. And after goal, we went down. Manchester City, a club that at times in the last few weeks have seemed beset with division and laden with disappointment particularly last time out at Arsenal away from home when they look like they've blown it Norwich could be a very dangerous place for them to come right now Carroll Road's not easy really tight really tight stadium they were tough to beat and tough to break down and some of the stuff I was seeing was absolutely phenomenal the goals were just you know, John Ruddy was down the other end, a good, good top keeper at the time, was in England squads with me, and balls were just flying past him. Tevez scored an unbelievable goal, the first goal, showed his quality again. And then you know, Aguero scored a superb strike. Silva stolen it. Tevez. Oh, Carlos Tevez has plucked out an absolute beauty! And he blasts Manchester City into the lead here at Carrow Road. Tevez takes up those tricky positions that Norwich have found him hard to contain. It's Tevez. It's Aguero. Oh, it's an absolute beauty. That was nothing short of breathtaking. There's never really going to be any other sort of result. We went out to Carrow Road, confidence high. The team was pretty settled, the, the, the manager knew what, what team he wanted out there and you know, we were working well together so yeah, the, uh, some of the goals, some of the football was, was certainly some of the best of the season. Silva for Torre, ruddy save, has it gone far enough, it's in by Carlos Tevez. Well if you're going to come back from the wilderness and make an impact, do what Carlos Tevez has done today, set up one, score two. That was what they did. It wasn't a surprise when you seen that and or scoring six. It wasn't a thing of oh wow. It was like okay, yeah, we can we can really do that for teams. Aguero. Aguero. The goal machine for Manchester City strikes again. One of the best I've seen. I mean, they literally destroyed Norwich that afternoon by themselves. I mean, we were looking at the back to each other like, what is going on with these two? I think, what have they, what have they eaten today? I mean, it just is unreal. They were flying. That's not enough on that. And Carlos Tevez will go away from Carra Road with the match ball. Something of a gift about the third. Well, we and saw... something of the cheekiness about the celebration. Months on the golf course, but back in business. I think City fans are probably going, you know, always forgiven it. The fact, I mean, that, that golf swing is, is incredibly cheeky. You know, he's been away for, for almost six months and comes back in and goes, yeah, and, you know, I know I've been away, but yeah, look at this. It just, honestly, it was great fun and uh, we all loved it. To be honest with you, I really wasn't happy with it at the time, if I'm being honest. I just thought it was a bit, it really got on my nerves, which people told me to chill out about, but I felt it was fair enough really. But yeah, I didn't like it personally, but I loved the result and I loved the way he played. So yeah, no worries with that. No, me salió. Me parece el golf fue uno de mis refugios cuando, bueno, había todo el problema con el club, con, con Mancini y todo. He could get away with that golf swing celebration. If he's not played so well, maybe not, but the cheeky little at the end was so good. We'll allow it. 
And with Carlos Tevez returning to centre stage, exactly where Manchester City would want him after all the ructions he's brought to the club, finally smiles and welcome back into the bosom of the Manchester City family. The game at Norwich away was impressive in every way, just to be a part of it as well. Everything seemed to flow and that game, to be honest, stands like a piece of art a little bit. It really does. It was so effortless and it was such a good display from everyone. Um, in every attacking sense, in my opinion. I remember thinking, this is, this is going well. But I also, I think, maybe in the build-up to that goal, or maybe just after that goal, I remember Torre uh, did his hamstring. When I felt my hamstring and I left it in the first half, I feel it out. It's fine. And Mancini was like, okay, yeah, it's done. Sit, you, you do your part, you do too much. And we're done in you, you can rest. Yaya Torre is getting a standing ovation and he brings a wonderful season with Manchester City to an end. Yaya got injured, so then, oh, then Mancini calls my name. And um, I had to do a quick warm up because it didn't look good for Yaya. So I had to come on uh, pretty, uh, pretty fast after, uh, after st I was still sitting on the bench. And then, yeah, then you're part of it. And then all of a sudden it clicks in. Okay, listen, this is, this is, this is the moment. This is what you've been waiting for for so long to win the Premier League with your, with your team. Half time reached at the Etihad Stadium. Manchester City have one hand back on the Premier League trophy. But City won't settle for this, surely, and will battle through to try and break down QPR further. At the moment, the visitors are getting relegated and City are winning the title. Half time from the Etihad Stadium, it's Manchester City 1, Queen's Park Rangers 0. It felt close. It felt close. We were also aware that if we weren't as focused as we needed to be, then we were, we were going to let the chance of an opportunity, of a, an opportunity of a lifetime, potentially slip from us. And I didn't see. I didn't even see who scored. Who scored? Right. Oh, it was a fluky one. Bad goalkeeper, really. All right. Good. Well, I love that. I reckon Balotelli's going to come on and, uh, you know, I reckon it's written in history now. I reckon he's going to come on and do the business. I reckon we can do it. I always reckon we can do it, man. It's just whether we can or not, whether it's our time. You know what I mean? But yeah, I reckon we can do it, man. Without a doubt, I reckon we. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> In that moment, we were down, and we knew that the only way we could get back is if we won against City away from home from a one-goal deficit in the second half. So the pressure was on, and as we stepped out, it's a case of, right, roll up your sleeves, the last four to five minutes of the season, and see what we can do. No one's nervous about anything. And then the second half starts, and it's totally different. It's just totally, totally different. Here we go, this is all that's left of the season. Being 1-0 down still gave us the opportunity for a mistake or a counter-attack, a good bit of play for us that we, we could muster up. And I think that um, Sean Wright Phillips, I remember, hooked one. Jolien Lescott, I think, misread the, the flight, got a little bit stuck underneath. I didn't look back at that game for a while because it's not an enjoyable watch for me. And not, not because of my involvement in their goal, but just I just don't enjoy it. I want it to be cleaner. I want a 3 0. Oh, Lescott's headed backwards and it's Cissé for QPR. Oh, that wasn't in the script. It's Jabril Cissé. Disaster for Jolien Lescott and Manchester City. I've seen it now and I, the camera pans to me. I don't remember feeling anything like I dealt with bad outcomes before and it's 1 1. So. We've only got to score a goal in a half of a game, which I'm confident we'll do. Like, not worried at all. Obviously, at that time, it was like all the momentum was for us after half time, cracking time to score, gave us that really galvanised us in the game to stay on the game plan because a draw, a point for us would have been enough. I remember thinking, uh, OK, at least there's 45 minutes or so to go here. You've got, you've got time to, 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 to rebuild this. I don't think I could have been 
expecting what happened next because like City were City were not playing badly they just weren't playing well they had a lot of the ball and weren't really doing a lot with it Obviously, Joey put his uh, 10 pence into the game, which just added to the drama, added to the emotion. Oh, and Tevez has gone down on the edge of the penalty area here. The assistant has spotted the incident. So what's Joey Barton done here? Joey felt it's the right time to get involved in this game that's going to be talked about in history. Carlos Tevez is writhing. I always say about problems with Barton, so... Me recuerdo que creo que me hace FAO y después no sé qué me dice y bueno, empezamos a como a pelear y bueno, a él lo expulsan y bueno, ahí es donde eh, nosotros empezamos a creer que, que podíamos ganarlo. The lead could hinge on this moment. Barton's off. The actual red card, I think, if you look back at it, it may be an unpopular opinion, but these days now with VAR you see that Tevez lashed out at Joe. Joe obviously retaliated, and what happened after that was was a reaction from from him getting sent off. It was uh, not a quick journey leaving the field. I think there was one or two altercations as he was coming off. He's so angry uh, with Tevez. When I say, because you know my English is so bad, so I say, hey, red card, red card. <laughs> And he said, shut up. I don't know what he was thinking. Maybe he was thinking, you know what, I try to help City out because I was a former City player. By that one, thank you, Joey. But I don't think it was like that. I think it was really like his ego and his emotions got the, the better of him. I feel something in the back and I say, what the fuck? And Barton's just kicked out of the huevo and Joey Barton's lost it. Joey Barton's lost it here. To do that, you can't explain it. I think it, probably, it might make sense to him and he may feel it's unjust and so on, but it doesn't make sense. Well, I was intent on, on it kind of evening it up. I felt like um, Mike Dean, who was the ref at the time, had unfairly sent me off. I mean, I, would des I deserved to be sent off, but I felt Tevez should have gone. And at that point, you know, I was just intent on, on getting a City player sent off. He tried to head with Vinny, so... Now what you got? Now you got the whole team hyped. And it ended up with Mika trying to escort him off the pitch and then Mario started to get involved, who were both the subs at the time, and it developed into a bit of chaos. Why is Balotelli getting involved? Why is Balotelli getting involved? I remember Mancini and Plett screaming from the sideline, Mario, 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 get away, get away from the situation. I'm just happy that I didn't get close to him because probably I would have <laughs> an easy other record and he's not what the team needed at that moment. <laughs> just not a footballer. He's, he maybe he want to be a fighter, but if you want to be a fighter, then you have to fight. And what he did is like covert. So after this, I can't say nothing more about this person. As a professional, you feel like you've been let down because we needed everyone. You know, we needed everyone to have a chance. And you think, OK, okay we, we're playing against 10 men now. This, is, this has got to make sure that there's going to be a bit more space on the pitch. So what a QPR do, they drop even deeper. After the dramatic game at Old Trafford earlier on today, Manchester City's trip to Molyneux just got even bigger. United drew 4-4 with Everton, meaning Roberto Mancini's side can move to within three points at the top of the Premier League table with a victory. We were actually in the, in the coach on the way to the game, to, uh, to Wolves. I clearly remember we were, we were sitting in the, in the back of the coach and we were playing Mario Kart. United was winning. Obviously, because I, I saw the guys, they were all, all of them focused which one is the result. And I start to shout, goal, 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 and they start to celebrate. Obviously, it was a, it was a joke. The lads started joking, uh, Everton have scored, and uh, then we would check the phone, they hadn't, and then they would <laughs> nobody knew when the, the lads were messing around or uh, Everton had scored. And then when, when the, the, they scored for 4-4, four, four, I think, they said, ah, you are again a joke, and then, you know, they scored, really. Kola was, was a joker, so when he said that, you knew that 
it could have been a possibility that he was not lying, but he was joking. Yeah, I mean, Alex is funny. Alex is, uh, is a good guy to have uh, in the dressing room. Catch it. Huh? He was definitely one of, the, one of the jokers in the team. Honestly, I, I don't have exact memories of that moment. It's the, t the text message from Fellaini is what stays with me. Fellaini, after the game, sending me a message directly and saying, like, right, now it's up to you, f <laughs> I, I don't know if you're going to have to edit that one out. So for the first time in a while, Manchester City's fate is more or less in their own hands. If they win their last four games, then barring mathematical improbabilities, that should be enough to secure them the title. You kind of to start to feel excited, you know, you feel excited. Not because of the result, but more because we know that we are playing well and we know there's no chance we're going to drop points. And it was, it was incredible. That was the, the momentum point, that turnaround point. That game and watching how, how Everton managed to, to squeeze that result, you can see the momentum immediately shift back to us. The opening goal was, uh, was, was a masterclass in assisting from Gail Clichy. Um, he pulls off one of, the, one of the passes of the season. Aguero, no work to do, so slots it into the net. Here's Aguero, and he's tucked it away. They've been threatening, and now they've found a way through. And Gail Clichy gets the assist and the congratulations. Tevez involved, Aguero there to earn the headlines and the goal. In the end of the day, it was a beautiful game. I think we played great football. Again, Carlos was, uh, was, was, was ever so performant. Sergio was just on fire that day. And, um, and yeah, it was, a, it was a really good day. And Tevez is threatening again. Two men over. Nasri! Wolves heading towards the drop. Manchester City closing in on Manchester United. And so it was. It finished in the rain. It was. It was a, a brilliant afternoon for City because the title race was back in their hands. And suddenly, I had to start getting nervous about games again. It's turned into an unexpectedly good day for Manchester City. Title race that seemed to have been won by Manchester United a fortnight ago is well and truly back on. For us, it was an extreme high of emotions. Still, you know, you don't go over enthusiastic, but at least now it's in your own, own hands again. Tevez exchanging with De Jong. Tevez again. Tevez again, fine save, Kenny, really good save. In goes Tevez once more, Aguero, and Kenny kept it from crossing the line this time. Well, a call for a handball in there as well. I think there was a handball. Every time like some the ball accidentally hits your hand in the box as a defender, you're thinking like something bad's gonna happen here. I'm looking the other way and the ball hits my hand from that standpoint. Yes it does, I'm not gonna deny that it doesn't. It's uh, it's one which thankfully again didn't matter. But if it would have been given against me, I think you might have seen real tears on the field that day. But as I say, thankfully there was none of that from me. I think it's a 50-50 call that one, but <laughs> Sergio Aguero and how consistent he's been this season. When it dropped to him, I thought. There's no way Kenny's going to save that. On that day, uh, their goalkeeper had a, a, an amazing game. Yeah, I think he made maybe you know, eight, nine saves. Nasri. Cliché. Too close to Kenny. Somehow, we struggled to, to, you know, to find something. You know? We struggled, we always missed the last little pass. And when we did find the last pass, the goalkeeper was, uh, was amazing that day. He didn't play very well. And uh, QPR is a good team, they had good players. So, obviously, if you uh, low your focus in a match with good players like QPR have, you're going to risk to lose. It's normal. You have to give them credit. They kept going. You know, they, they counter attacked and sucker punched. They waited for a mistake and, and they took it. They took their chances. And just in a blink of an eye, you, you're on that pitch thinking, what the hell has just happened here? Armand Traore came on as a substitute for us and he, he was rapid, he had, he had pace to burn. Traore broke down the left, Gail's behind me, and all I hear was, foul him, he's quick. And I'm thinking, if you're saying that, 
he must be rapid. He ended up skipping past, I think, maybe company on the left-hand side. Vinny normally cleans people out for that. So I'm thinking, oh, sh sh Trey always escaped the challenge of company down the left. He has options in the area. As soon as he, he hit it, I just got the flight of the ball. I, to be honest, I didn't back myself to sort of wait and volley it. So I went to attack it and uh, headed it down into the ground. And then the feeling was out of this world. I can't, can't describe the feeling. Queen's Park Rangers lead here. Jamie Mackey has sent Manchester City towards heartbreak on the final day of the season. It is typical City. I laugh a little bit about it now because when I first came, you know, the one thing that was consistent that everybody used to say to me about was typical City. I didn't quite understand what typical City was. And then we get to towards the end of the game and we're thinking, wow, now I get it. Now I, now I get that typical City moment. City need to score twice now to take the title away from Manchester United. Oh, it's it. in United's hands. It's Alex not... Ferguson heard the news. He just gave Bob an oil in the side of the pitch and he's just here. He's trying to stay calm. The arms are up. He doesn't know where he's saying, Jeff. He's standing up. At that moment, we couldn't believe it. Fans that were really upset, some of them crying. I could see a, a kid uh, crying and, and from that moment you realise, wow, we, we probably blew it. There's an image of a City fan on the footage that I think sums up how we were all feeling. He was holding his head, um, but not in that kind of hands over your face way. It was kind of in a really sort of like, just, I've got my hands on my head because of despair, sort of way. Can you remember what Mancini's reactions were on the sideline when... Of course. If you want, I can, I can repeat what he said when we, when we considered the second goal. F*** you, f*** you, f*** you, f*** you. It was mentioned every player that, that he see. That was Mancini. He wanted to win. In that moment, uh, that was his reaction. I think totally normal, because we were playing for, for, for something big. And uh, when we, when we consider the second goal, he was obviously angry. They have 25 minutes to score twice here, Manchester City, or they will have blown it. Right, how am I going to pick the lads up again, you know? How are we going to make sure that we get back up from this? And uh, it's like the biggest disappointment in your life at that moment in time. Literally, that's how heavy it was. Everything you've worked for, thrown it all away on one game that you should have always won. This is how it is to be a football fan. Just can't bear it. He cannot bear it. Can you imagine what it would be to live in this city tomorrow? Imagine coming face to face with a red in the town this evening. Where will they find the moral fibre to get up and go to work in the morning? If we lose this game, right, we probably could never walk and show our faces in the, in the city centre anymore. Not with the fans, because the embarrassment would be just too big. You know, United got an upper hand and we will always be the laughing stock, the second, the second place, uh, the noisy neighbours. An age-old rivalry, bigger now than ever before. The Etihad Stadium, on which the eyes of a significant portion of the football-watching world are trained for arguably the most important Manchester derby ever played. And one which is going to go an awfully long way towards deciding the destiny of this season's Barclays Premier League title. I remember the chairman coming to the hotel and him being more serious than he was normally and, and he came and it was like, you need to win this game. And he never said anything like that before, and I was like, oh, this is a big game, this. Think about it, now all of a sudden it's three points, right? Now it's not, it's not eight points the gap, now it's five points. Still. This was a six-pointer game, so now people in the club, you know, they're getting excited, the fans in the city getting excited, you know. Um, we knew if we would win that game, we'd go ahead of United based on goal difference, right? Uh, I think that the game that they, we played uh, at Old Trafford, 6-1, I think that we gave us a, a big strength. Way by Lescott. And when the whistle goes, there will be very few Manchester United supporters here. Here's Dzeko. Couldn't be six, could it? It could, you know. 
a seismic day in English football. United it was not only the team, the number one in Manchester, United was the number one in the country. And we come, we want to change that. Everyone's so hyped and, in, and intense, but not hopeful. Just believing we were going to win that game and it was just like a genuine, yeah, we're going to do them. Do the double over. It's being billed as the biggest game in Premier League history. A win for City and they'll be top with just two games to go. A win for United and they'll be just a point away from their 20th title. The fact that it was a derby then just multiplied <laughs> everything that was already important about this game. Also, Sir Alex Ferguson before saying that, you know, never in his lifetime City would win the league. So I think the blue side felt like, look, this is, this is, this is the chance, this is the moment. For the 163rd time, the Blues and the Reds of Manchester do battle, but with greater significance hanging on this than on any of the previous meetings. Obvious, um, you know, there was nerves in the dressing room. It was a little bit more quieter, I have to say, than normal games, because everybody knew what was on stake. But eventually, obviously, you know, when you go into the game, then everything is just like fades away as soon as that whistle goes. Obviously, that, that was around that time when the tide started turning a little bit. United happy to put 10 behind the ball. City have to find a way of breaking them down. The fact that this iconic manager in Sir Alex Ferguson turned up to the Etihad and paid City the ultimate respect of not trying to win that game. His team selection, his set up for the afternoon said we are coming here not to lose and that gave City confidence. That's another City corner. Stoppage time, two minutes of it at the end of a first half. A few chances. Yeah, we were just waiting for that one moment and uh, you know, it was, it was time for the captain, Vincent Company, to, to turn up and, and deliver the goods. Killed in by Dami Silva and turned in by Vincent Company. Manchester City ahead, right on half-time. Cometh the hour, cometh the captain. That goal is probably as important, if not the most important, of the season. Yeah, you know, when I talk, I have a big smile because it's true that, you know, you bring back memories. Uh, the celebration was uh, him, you know. Uh, what you see is what you get. As soon as he scored a goal, it was just electric. You know, he was running knee high like an athlete. He was running towards the fans. It was just a thing of beauty. Captain Fantastic, he did it again. He was a very important player, very important man in the dressing room and also a score, an important goal against United. After everyone's gathered to sort of hug him and so on and they're walking away, he's just looking down at the ground because he's resetting his focus and that was the brilliant thing about Vinny. He could enjoy certain moments but he knew the job wasn't done yet. That night, you and Sir Alex Ferguson had a bit of a, a coming together. Obviously. Yeah, okay, but I have a lot of respect for you him. Do, eh? yeah. yeah. The two managers are nose to nose down beneath us. Fourth official Mike Jones has come between the two of them. And now a steward too, and yes, the stakes are high, but they're two experienced campaigners, and it seemed that Ferguson was the angrier of the two. Still, it's not over. Yeah, yeah, I have a lot of respect for him for what uh, we did in uh, football history in Manchester, what he did with uh, United. Uh, but you know, when we played this game, maybe we were. Uh, both so nervous in that moment and, uh, and also because I think maybe in that moment to change uh, something in Manchester after uh, I don't know how many years. City seconds away, Roberto Mancini seconds away. The noisy neighbours have ousted the sitting tenants. Manchester City's night in the derby and maybe in the Barclays Premier League. We knew it winning that game is what, what we are going to, to achieve. And uh, probably with that, uh, that game we won the title because uh, then everything was, was happening uh, naturally. Till last game of the season. Everything was going great till the last game.
I think that the pressure was uh, the big problem because uh, we have a chance to win uh, Premier League uh, and probably the pressure was uh, very, very difficult in that moment and uh, probably we didn't play well for this reason. So Gareth Barry comes off, a defensive-minded midfield player, makes way for Edin Dzeko. I was maybe angry not to play from the beginning, but uh, at that point for me it was just, uh, just about winning because uh, I knew that feeling before and I wanted to have it again. Silver's latest corner of umpteen. Kenny touches over from a Tevez header. Tevez with the ball in, Kenny away, Derry missed it. And the shot is wide. This is frantic and then some. Mancini brings on Zeko, Balotelli, he brings every, every arsenal that he had, he brought on because they're playing with 10 men. Well, I've got to say from Balotelli, it's either madness or magic. And it certainly has to be the latter. Uh, cheers, not from the Manchester City supporters, but from the QPR fans, because Stoke have equalised against Bolton. QPR are very nearly safe now. Aguero kept it in play, Dzeko! It was deflected into the side netting, the wrong side of the side netting from City's point of view. The time was... Uh was passing, you know, and we had, we didn't have some, some great chances, maybe one or two, me, one, Mario. Five minutes of added on time, here's Balotelli, it's blocked, and it's behind for another corner kick. We were attacking a lot, so you can feel that uh, we could score from any moment. Manchester United still lead by one goal to nil, and City need two. Man City was, uh, it was everywhere. <laughs> when we were losing against QPI, it was coming mad. Just his hair was everywhere because it was like so care, you know, like it's impossible. We can't lose this game, impossible. When I saw to the, to the time, you know, when I saw his 89 minutes, I think, okay, that game uh, we lose. I think at that point, uh, we were almost, uh, almost, which is important, not, not believing uh, anymore. So now we got a corner. David Silva behind the ball. We know he can whip a ball in, um, and always looking for a, for a right uh, for the right guy. Here's Silva swings it in. Jekko's there. It's in. City have got to go back. It's Jekko. Three and a half minutes remaining. Until. I'm saying a good four or five years after, I didn't know Edin's goal was that late. And I'm glad I didn't, because I probably would have been more nervous about us not scoring after. When he scores, I was telling to myself, this is going to kill me because it's a fake, fake hope. I think I got angry. And that's a really weird reaction to have, but I was like, no. why are you doing this to no, us? No, why no. get so close? Because it's closer. You're watching than... the minutes tick yeah. down, and you're just like, why are you doing this to us now? Four minutes to save themselves! Four minutes to find that crowd! It couldn't have been timed any better. It was late, but it couldn't have been timed better because we, we, we only needed that one. We only needed that one. I looked to Mancini. Uh, Mancini say, come on, come on, and, and then say, okay. Me, I, for example, I think, okay, maybe we'll have another chance, you know. On paper, as a one-off, it is the biggest game remaining in the Barclays Premier League season 2011-12. In that period, I think Newcastle, for me, was one of the best teams in England. It was beating everyone, Newcastle. It was so strong. This was the, the game that United fans and players probably thought Newcastle could get something off us. But we, we still felt confident that if we did what we do, then we'd get the result that we needed. And the funny thing is that everybody was, ner everybody was nervous, right, before the game against Newcastle. 
So everybody was like, okay, we need this, we need this. So Yaya, Yaya stood up and said like, guys, relax. I got this. We got this. You're a big Yaya. We got this. The first half, I think, kind of uh, cancelled each other out. But the second, Mancini made that, that sub. Everything turned around. And you know what, Jim? Given that they have to win the game, there may be some Manchester City supporters querying the uh, withdrawal of a creator in Nasri and the uh, introduction of a holder in De Jong. Yeah, but all this is designed to release Yaya Toure further forward. That change really freed him up. Um, so Machini said to me, like, OK, you be the protector of that back four. Push Yaya forward. He w I want to play him more as a, as a number 10 to make sure that he's in front of the goal because, you know, his strengths were there. Um, if it was not David Silva, if it was not one of the strikers, it was Yaya, Yaya Toure who carried us away. And I had a secret that no one else had. He told me the day before he was going to score. Literally told me as we were leaving the dressing room, don't worry, I'm going to score tomorrow. Like he'd already been to the game, scored his goal and was coming back for training. Like, no joke. <laughs> well, it was crazy. Because after that, I think he told that to Kompany as well. Oh, Kompany come ask me in the dressing room. And I said, yes, I can score two goals. You clip the cliche. He comes up to me and he said, you know, Vinny, you uh, heading man elbows and fighting you did well this season now it's my time so I go okay yeah <laughs> whatever yeah I yeah. just you know you do what you do I suppose we'll, we'll run for you right today or whatever you know because yeah I yeah, was like this you know he was a genius but you, <laughs> a few guys had to put in a shift for him as well but then anyway you know he goes into the game boom boom scores two goals and <laughs> and I'm like how, how does he predict this how does he know this he definitely had a dream that <laughs> this was going to be his moment, and uh, it, it did happen. De Jong. Toure. Aguero. Toure! What a goal! Potentially a title winner! Gloriously stroked home by Yaya Toure and 3,000 Blue Mancunians. Reach out and touch paradise! The greatest player I ever played with, Yaya Torre, because if he played well, we won the game. There was no other outcome to any game if Yaya Torre played well. Clean sheet. He's rolled it in for Torre! That does it! It is all but cities now! He always showed up every game, but particularly, particularly in the big games. I think that Yaya played one of the best uh, games in his uh, history. The ribbons will surely now be blue. 44 years they've waited. They must wait only one week more, only one game more. I don't think there was any other way to win it for us there. We, had a, we needed a player to be in a special form and that day was him. When Yaya wanted to play and Yaya wanted to win, no one could stop us. You know, I really felt that. Yaya, Yaya is a, a very confident boy since he was young, you know, and he knows he's talented, you know, and he doesn't feel the pressure, you know, and he, because he's been winning trophies before, he knew what, he was, what it takes to win trophies. I would say one of probably those signing that took the club to another level. You see him play for the first time in your team and you go, wow, this is, this is an exceptional time. He had, he had everything. He was unique. He was, he was unplayable. Like, it was almost like the bigger the game, the better he became. For me, if we get to Kupiak by winning the game, we win the league. Because for me, Kupiak was not a threat at all. Manchester City are so very, very nearly there. QPR is coming to, to our, our stadium. I was sure, winning at Newcastle, that's it. Once he scored the second, you knew we had one hand uh, on the trophy. Unbelievable, just unbelievable. There's never been a final day like this. It can't, can it? It can't. It can't. Oh. They took a kick off. They played the long ball straight away because also 2-2 also was uh, was a good result uh, for them at that time. Two and a half minutes of stoppage time played. Two and a half minutes to play. 
Out comes Wright Phillips. He must run for the hills. And then I remember Nasri, the throwing actually that ends up turning the ball over to City and City break and score. Um, Nasri could have kept it in and he's thinking it's a City throw, so he lets it go out. And then I think, I think it's Nader Manua that takes the throw in. I said to Jay Bothroyd, our striker, you know, go down the line, I'm going to throw it down the line. I threw it where I thought he was going to be. He wasn't there. So as the last QPR player to touch the ball, as City started then making that next attack. And I've headed it down to Nigel, and then he's played it forward. I picked the ball up from my own half. I drive the ball. So now looking at the clock, I see the clock is ticking down to 93, the 93rd minute. I strive over the midline. I see David Silva going white. At that moment, in the corner of my eye, I see Sergio dropping off. I hear him screaming, Nigel, Nigel. I don't even want to play to him because it's full in there, you know? It is, it is, it is full with bodies in there. I decide to do it. And then when I receive the ball, uh, I say to Mario, Mario, stay there. I pass to you and then you uh, play again, you know, say back to the, to the pass. And then when they give me the ball, I control. But in my head, I control to shoot. So I control and I want to shoot now. The ball went a little bit too far. That moment of Balotelli showed us why we love him. And it's not just drama and palaver which comes with him. It's that, that moment when he... You don't get Aguero without Balotelli. But this is about Aguero and Aguero is great. It's finished at Sunderland. Manchester United have done all they can. That Rooney goal was enough for the three points. Manchester City are still alive here. Balotelli, Aguero! I swear you'll never see anything like this ever again. So watch it. Drink it in. Greatest moment I've seen in Premier League football. Unbelievable. And lost for words, it's absolutely incredible. It's a job! It's a job! It's a Manchester United's game is over. Aguero, Bocuruna. Galoteria glissé. So Aguero! 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 It's just the most extraordinary scenario you could have dreamt of. After the goal, I feel so so happy because uh, I was like a shock. Just remember, like, uh, okay, I scored the best goal in my life. So after that, I feel so, you know, relaxing. It was the whole stadium, the whole fan, the whole team, the people on the bench, people left out from the from from the squad. We were just one at that perfect moment. It was just pure joy. You could see it in our faces. You could see the way how you were like hugging each other. And you look at the fans and you could see everybody was crying like kids, fathers, mothers, grandparents. Everybody was just knew like, okay, this is us. Yes! Come on! Out of body experience, total out of body experience. I could never be able to explain how I felt then. It was the weirdest feeling I've ever had in my life. Manchester City are the champions of England! And a horro gets it in added on time! Have you ever seen anything like this before? Where does football go from here? Uh, Sergio score. Uh, I don't remember very, very well what happened. Uh, crazy moment for 
uh, all the people that were uh, inside and outside of the stadium. Uh, I think that one of the best uh, moments in my life. Part of me thought, well, we've got one more minute to play here. Um, and I was, I think, the happiest man on earth when I saw QPR just launching it after the game, uh, after the goal, and uh, basically saying, you know, that's done for us, we've had enough of it. The Blue Moon has risen! Just like a dream in their hearts! City are champions! And they did it in the most staggering fashion. There was no other way, was the City were not going to win the Premier League title any other way. This club doesn't do things normal. Una locura todo el estadio, una locura. Fue un momento maravilloso de nuestra carrera. The fans who left, I'm sure, will be trying to get back in for the Premier League celebrations. So celebrating, they look to have survived in the Premier League. Seeing the QPR fans celebrating and realizing that there are almost 50,000 people in the whole arena who are going nuts because now, like, everything's gone how everybody wants it. <laughs> the celebration was amazing in the dressing room, then, even at the stadium and after the game. It was a great day. Man City fans for the last 44 years uh, didn't win that league and I remember these uh, at Old Trafford ground, these uh, banner, you know, like, I don't know how many years and counting, you know. We can reset that clock all the way to zero. I was so happy that uh, we could be the generation of the team that we, we have finally won it half after 44 years. Yeah! I'm not someone who is planning ahead, you know, because I'm always a little bit more cautious. So I would have never bought the spray, the blue spray, if I wasn't 100%, 200% sure that we we're going to leave the trophy. I don't think it really hit me till maybe, maybe two, three days later in terms of really what just happened, what did we just go through. To do it in that way, to come back and win it in the way that this team won it, with that goal, you wouldn't want it any other way. This will remain, I think, as one of the, the most iconic moments in sports. It is so hard to get that winning mentality into a team that does not have it. Roberto brought that. You know, winning that first FA Cup, I think, you know, gave that confidence. And then, you know, to go, to go and, and, and weather through a season like that season, and, uh, it required a, a manager like Roberto in terms of his personality, his, his attitude, his hunger. Roberto was, I think, came at the right moment, at the right time, and with the right group of players. We work very hard for uh, many years to build this team and you know, to win the first title is uh, always, always very, very difficult. Vamos City! After winning the first Premier League, it was for us as a club players, we, we say, OK, we, we are here now to, to fight against the best clubs. At that time we were just we were emerging into, into a force and maybe some people didn't quite take us seriously enough and we proved we could win. That period was, was massive, there had to be success, the chairman had made it clear to us as a group of players we had to be successful and we wanted to be. We were the first kind of player to take City to the level the owner wanted to, but you also knew that we were just here and we were just passing by. We knew that what was coming after us was going to be enormous. 
Then we were, we were the hunters chasing down the pack. Now we're the hunted. The expectation now is a completely different ball game. You know, every season we come in with the expectation that we're gonna win the league. It comes because of a track record of 10 years of a win, winning culture, of a winning mentality, and with a track record that I think speaks for itself. No other English team has won more trophies, uh, has won more games, has scored more goals, and has conceded less goals than what Manchester City has done uh, over these last 10 years.